Hello and welcome to another book of the day. Today we're featuring Chump by Carl Hyacin. Let's look for some of his books uh, in Access 360 through the virtual library. The virtual library can be found in apps and services in the portal. And in order to find the ebooks, we go to K through 12 ebooks, of course. Then Access 360 opens up and um, make sure that you're logged in once it opens up and you will see the tile on the right to log in and you use your username and password, the same ones that you use for the portal. Oh, this is taking a little while. Okay, now we are in Access 360 and we want to make sure you have logged in, like I mentioned before. If you see welcome and your name, that means you're logged in. If you haven't done so, you can actually search for books without logging in, but then you won't be able to check them out. So my advice is to log in first and then look for books. And then we're going to search for the author we're featuring today. Like I said, his name is Carl Hyacin. And we're going to type his name on the search window here. Um, his name is per spelled C-A-R-L. Last name H-I-A-A-S-E-N. And we're going to search for that. But meanwhile... Let me talk to you about his books and the reason why I chose uh, him, uh, to feature him this week in particular. You probably heard the phrase, only in Florida. Yes, only in Florida, you are in danger of getting injured by an iguana falling off a tree when it gets very cold. The author we are featuring today understands that. His name, like I said before, is Carl Hyacin. I chose this author because most of his stories, or all of his stories for children, are about protecting our ecosystems. He was born in South Florida, and he has lived here all his life. But let's look at some of the titles in the virtual library. Okay, here we go. We have, oh, remember also uh, this little icon that I'm showing you. When you see this icon, this means that the book is an electronic book. However, if you see the headphones, it is an audio book. Uh, if you want to listen to a book and take the test that is between you and your teacher, for me, um, that is fine, but your teacher might not allow you to do that. So if you want to try an audiobook, it's best to ask your teacher before you do that. Anyway, let's see some of his books. Here uh, we have Hoot, and Hoot is about a colony of endangered owls being threatened by new construction. Flush is about it's a historical mystery about illegal sewage dumping all his books are very um, funny they're humorous stories but the one i want to talk to you about today is called chumps and as you probably can guess it has to do with alligators and the everglades um but I don't want to be read the story a little bit of the story to you. I want you to listen to the author talking about the book and reading one very exciting part from it. Hi, I'm Carl Hyacin, and I'm the author of Chomp. I'm going to tell you a little bit about how this book was written. It's the story of a reality TV show being filmed in the Everglades when reality takes control. My granddaughter is the one who asked me to write a book called Chomp because she thought it would be a cool title. Any book that 
takes place in the Everglades has some serious chomping going on. I was inspired also by watching the reality TV shows of these so-called survivalists that you see on Animal Planet and Discovery Channel, and I thought it would be a cool way to get into the subject of what would happen if you put a, a TV star in the middle of the Everglades under really dangerous circumstances, and a couple of kids had to save him. I'm going to read a few paragraphs from Chomp so you get a feel for it. And by way of introduction, there's a young man named Wahoo, whose father is an animal wrangler who provides animals for these shows. And the book opens with the two of them. Hundreds of iguanas had died and tumbled from the treetops during the big freeze in southern Florida. As far as Wahoo knew, his dad was the only person who'd been seriously hurt by one of the falling reptiles. Mickey Cray had been standing with a cup of hot cocoa beneath a coconut palm in the backyard when the dead lizard had knocked him stiff. Later, after he was brought home from the hospital, Mickey had ordered Wahoo to search the property, capture any iguanas that had survived the frigid weather, and relocate them to an abandoned orchid farm a half mile away. Wahoo hadn't searched very hard. It wasn't the fault of the iguanas that they'd frozen to death. They weren't meant to be living so far north, but Miami pet dealers had been importing baby specimens from the tropics for decades. The customers who bought them had no idea that they would grow six feet long, eat all the flowers in the garden, and then leap into the swimming pool to poop. When that rude reality set in, the unhappy owners would drive their pet lizards to the nearest park and set them free. Before long, South Florida was crawling with hordes of big wild iguanas that were producing hordes of little wild iguanas. So this is just a little bit of the story of Chumps, um, read by the author. If you like that, and if you like the explanation of why we have so many iguanas in South Florida, which he explains it very well, uh, make sure you check out Chumps or maybe any other of his books. They're equally fun and entertaining. Um, and um, those uh, of you that check out ebooks and take your test, your um, that will count for your the challenge if you want to take the Earth Day challenge. Thank you and happy reading.